Hi everyone, Fo here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about hair typing. Um, super excited to discuss the topic. Before we dive in, I bet you're wondering how is my hair styled. This is a wash and go that I did my typical way, you know, with my hooded dryer and everything else. And I use the Curl Mix Ultra Hold Moisturizer and the Curl Mix Ultra Hold Gel. So that is what is in this hair. It's a day two wash and go. And if you want to hear my first impressions of those two products, then a video is already up and you can watch that video after this video. When it comes to hair typing, I use a variety of ideologies. I very vaguely use the Andre Walker hair typing system. I also pulled from Black Girl Curl's discussion of essential elements, and that includes basic cosmetology theory that can be found in resources such as your Milady Cosmetology textbooks and things like that. So I also pull from the Milady Cosmetology textbook as well, the latest version. And I also pull from my basic um, level education that I received from those pamphlets and from those online courses that I was taking when I worked at Sally Beauty, when they would offer us online education. Delving into hair typing, what many of us are using currently in the natural community for hair typing is the Andre Walker hair typing system or um, a version of the Andre Walker hair typing system. So Andre Walker, hairstylist, he introduced the hair typing system in the 90s, his hair typing system in the 90s in his book, Andre Talks Hair. And so to give a brief overview of the system, type one is straight hair, type two is wavy hair, type three is curly hair, and type four is coily or tight wavy hair. And for each hair type, there are subcategories that include letters such as A, B, and for two categories, we've added C in the natural hair and the curly hair community, we added three C and four C. And so in those subcategories, there are some differing characteristics such as a smaller curl size or smaller wave size from the overarching category. And so um, when it comes to the Andre Walker hair typing system, he introduced it so that we could find other people who have hair similar to ours, ask them, okay, so where are you going to get your hair done? Possibly find a great hairdresser possibly figure out the type of styling, the type of styling products that person is using and be able to be on one accord or have more help with our hair journey. And fun fact about this book, he actually doesn't discuss any products of his own in this book. And he also, um, when I was researching him for my dissertation, he also appears to not have come out with products until the early 2000s, his one of his first sets of products, and then um, later on, he came out with the gold system for hair care. And he used the hair typing system to help people find products with the gold system. But that to me really speaks to how he introduced the hair typing system to be sort of a general guide, as opposed to having to do with just his hair products or just a specific set of hair products. And so when it comes to the Andre Walker hair typing system, how do I use it? So I use it in a very general way. I don't assign a specific one letter number category or a series of letter number categories to my hair. So for people to be able to find my content, I've been putting hashtag type three hair, hashtag type four hair. So people that have some similar hair characteristics to mine can find my content. And I know for some people it's more beneficial to get more specific. Um, because they have hair that's very firmly asso associated with a specific hair type. Like for some people, a lot of people in our community, Curly Coily Natural, will say they firmly have, for example, 4C hair. And so for that person, it may be really convenient, really great for representation for them to put 4C in their video titles, their hashtags, for other people to find them with similar hair and those sorts of things. For me, it's better for me to remain more vague and not assign um, one number letter category or a series of number letter categories to my hair because my hair can look, my curl pattern, my hair can look so different based on how my hair is cared for, based on what products are in my hair, you know, based on how my hair is styled. 
Sometimes my curls can look larger. Sometimes they can look smaller. Sometimes they can be more weighed down. You know, my hair can look so many different ways based on how it's cared for. So it's better for me just to not, you know, box my hair in when that doesn't really work for me, especially another factor, I have a bunch of different curl patterns. So instead of me having one or two dominant curl patterns, I have maybe three or four or more dominant curl patterns. So I was just like, okay, let me just remain very general. I also noticed with doing my dissertation on black women's hair perspectives, I noticed that we in the natural community at times assign different stories or different narratives to people's hair based on the number letter, letter category that we place their hair in or the number letter, letter category that they share with us. And so I realized that it's more much more advantageous for me to provide my own story as opposed to giving a number letter or giving a series of numbers and letters and a story being assigned to my hair that oftentimes isn't authentically my journey. So, and I know for some other people, they find it better to sit down, chat with you, give you their journey, their perspective, as opposed to there being a presumed journey, a presumed perspective because of the number letter system. What are some other ways that hair can be categorized besides the Andre Walker hair typing system that can be super helpful? So one of the first things is hair density. So how many hairs somebody has per square inch? So hair density can be low, medium, or high, right? So some people don't have a lot of hairs per square inch naturally because of genetics. When it comes to having lower density hair, it may be really easy to see a person's scalp. So they may style their hair, you may see their scalp really easily, or just may not look like they have a lot of hair on their head. Some people have an average medium amount of hairs per square inch. And then some people have a lot of hairs per square inch, like me. I have high density hair. When it comes to high density hair, that, that hair may show up as you really may not be able to see that person's scalp very easily. You know, and even when you can see scalp, you could still see hair um, in that scalp area. So, and density can range on someone's head, that's important to keep in mind. But yeah, so one of the first categories is hair density. Second category that can really help with hair typing is strand size. How small or large someone's individual like hair strands are. So you can see some of my individual hair strands. Um, so hair strands can be small or fine, medium, like sort of average, and then there's also coarse or large hair strands. So fine hair strands, you can't really see them. They're very gossamer, um, very small, and they can be very delicate. And when you put them between your fingers, you may not really feel them if you rub your fingers together with that one strand of hair. Medium sized hair strands is average, you know. You may kind of feel it when you rub the strand between your hair and then coarse are large hair strands and you really can feel them when you rub them between your your fingers and so they're also quite visible that they're big bigger or larger hair strands and so the majority of my hair i have coarse or large hair strands and here and there i have some medium hair strands mixed in so another category is surface texture so some people have very silky um, hair along the surface. So it's kind of like silk. Their hair is a fabric. Some people have smooth hair along the surface. So it's smooth. It may be not the shiniest. It may be matte, but it's more smooth. Some people have medium hair. So it sits in between all the different hair categories. Some people have medium textured hair along the surface. And some people have cottony hair along the surface uh, having uh, a textured appearance that looks similar to cotton, um, feels similar to cotton, possibly even softer than cotton. And some people have more of a kinky or a coarse surface texture. And I know that that can be confusing. So um, let me break it down. So some people have a coarse surface texture. 
So their hair could be coarser or kinkier along the surface, but that doesn't automatically mean that they have large hair strands. So some people can have coarse surface texture and have really small hair strands. So they can have fine hair strands with coarse surface texture. So they can have delicate hair with a coarse or rougher surface texture. And some people can have silky hair with coarse or large hair strands. So for me, my hair profile is I am medium surface textured to cottony surface textured and my strands are coarse for the most part or large so that is surface texture another category is curl elasticity so how much the curls shrink right to the head what's their elasticity you know so elasticity can be low medium, high, and these things are like, you know, relative. Different people can have different different opinions of what's low, medium, high, so that's something to keep in mind as well. For me, I will say that my curl elasticity is on the higher side, but it's not the highest. Some people have very, very, very high shrinkage, like 90%. Now, some categories that have nothing to do with like your hair, but they matter in terms of how your hair behaves is weather and climate. And so when it comes to weather and climate, mine is more moderate. So I don't live somewhere that's super humid all the time or super dry all the time. So that means that I'm pretty okay with how my styles are able to last when I set my hair. Some people that may live in a drier climate may experience drier hair and have to do a lot more, you know, deep conditioning and a lot more treatments and just be really mindful to make sure their hair doesn't dry out from the dry climate. And then some people may live in places that are more moist, more humid. And so when they try to set their hair in styles like a roller set or a twist out or a bantu knot out, their hair frizzes and fluffs a lot quicker. Basically, the moisture in a humid environment causes some people's styles not to last because the moisture causes their hair to swell. So those are some factors to keep in mind. Also, hydration level, condition of the hair. Is the hair really bone dry? Is the hair having problems with dryness, damage, those sort of things? So that can impact how the hair appears. So my hair is very hydrated. I'm not having any major problems with dryness or breakage or anything like that. And so that impacts my hair's ability to have great styling when I set it in twist, twist outs, voluminous wash and goes, or very flat and contained, flat or contained wash and goes. So another factor is porosity or how porous the hair is. So sometimes hair can be more porous, meaning it lets in liquid really really easily sometimes hair is sort of average when it comes to how quickly it allows liquid in and then sometimes hair is low porosity meaning that it doesn't take in a lot of liquids very quickly if you don't know your porosity i don't think you need to know it unless you are having trouble with your routine and you think porosity could help but if you got a solid hair care routine and a solid understanding of your hair and you don't know your porosity i don't think you need your porosity um for me my hair is low porosity, so my hair does take a while to absorb liquids. And so the way that that impacts me is with my wash and go styling or when I do curl definition sets, I do allow, you know, products to sort of marinate for a few minutes before I go in and I style with them. So I put the product on and I let the product sort of set in my hair just for a little bit so it can soak in and get acquainted with all my hair. And then I go in and I style with the product and I smooth and rake it through for me to achieve my curl definition sets. So that's how my hair being lower porosity impacts my hair. Now, all my hair won't have the same porosity. I'm sure my porosity is higher towards, not high, but higher, more like medium. So it's probably low to medium, where it's more medium at the ends of my strands because the ends of my strands are older and they've been through more. So porosity can range even on a single hair strand on your head. Um, so I know that my porosity likely isn't the same throughout all of my head, but for the majority, my hair is low porosity. 
So with discussing these different hair characteristics, I know it can be really helpful for a lot of people when it comes to they look at other people's hair and they know something is different, but they're like, I don't know what's so different about their hair. Knowing hair characteristics can be helpful in that way. Well, I think it's a good idea to leave space for the understanding that sometimes you're going to look at some people's hair and look at how their hair is able to do certain things or able to show up a certain way and you're not going to know how the heck their hair is able to do it. And that is okay. I think the most important thing though is to focus on your hair characteristics and how your hair works because that can really help you with your hair health and your styling and achieving your goals that are feasible for your hair. I hope that this video has been super helpful to you all when it comes to hair typing and I'll catch you in the next video. Please make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Once again, my name is Fo. Bye-bye.